Our daily devotional today uh, comes from Luke chapter 15. This chapter, it speaks of the care, compassion, and love that Christ has for those who are lost and when they come to know him as Lord and Savior. Uh, in chapter 15, verses uh, 1, there's a church gathering. Uh, in this gathering, there are the Pharisees and the scribes. The Pharisees and the scribes were kind of the elitists, and they were concerned that Jesus was spending time with sinners. He said not only does he spend time with them, he eats with them. So they had a certain attitude, and they began to murmur. And Jesus, upon hearing this, spoke three parables. Those three parables are the story of the lost sheep, the story of the lost coin, and the prodigal son. Now, what this brings to my remembrance is a uh, football game that I played in. Uh, I was fortunate enough, I intercepted a pass, ran 60 yards, scored a touchdown. When I scored the touchdown, I looked up into the stands. I started to see uh, people getting so excited. They were just caught up in the moment. They're high-fiving each other. Cheerleaders started turning flips and tossing each other up in the air. The band struck up a victory song. And that brings us to these three parables that Jesus teaches. Now, a parable is a very useful and effective training tool. A parable is basically a story that tells a point. The first parable that uh, Jesus speaks of is the parable of 100 sheep. In these verses, he speaks of a man who has 100 sheep. But upon doing his count, he finds that there's only 99 sheep. Jesus says to the crowd, what, what, which one of you would not leave the 99 and go into the wilderness to find that one who is lost? Upon finding his lost sheep, he puts it on his shoulder, he rejoices. He returns to town and asks his friends and neighbors to rejoice with him because he's found that which was lost. In verse 7, he speaks to, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. The second parable, uh, starting in verse 8, tells of the lost coin. It tells of a woman who has 10 pieces of silver, but loses one. That one is lost, and when she discovers that it's lost, she diligently seeks through the house. She begins to sweep the house. She's got her Roomba running. She's got a flashlight out searching for this lost coin. When she finds the coin, she rejoices. She sends out a group text message to all her family friends and friends and says, rejoice with me, for I found that which was lost. Likewise, joy shall be in heaven with the presence of angels over that one who was lost but is now found. Verse 11 tells the story of the prodigal son. Now, the prodigal son had a little bit of an attitude that put himself in jeopardy. He wanted the inheritance of his father now while I'm living. His father decided to grant his request, split the inheritance between uh, the prodigal son and his other son. The prodigal son decides to leave the home of his father, goes out and starts to live what the Bible refers to as riotous living. Every day was a party. Every moment was a celebration. He was greatly taken advantage of by those who were around him because ultimately he lost all the money that his father had given. Up on a moment of clarity, he decides that and he makes a great decision because he realizes that the quality life that I really want is in the father's house. He turns and heads back to his father's house upon seeing him from a great distance. The father is overcome with the joy of the moment. He can't hold himself. He starts to walk towards his son as he sees him returning home. He can't help, but the joy of the moment catches him. He begins to trot. Before you know it, he's in a full out run. He grabs his son, embraces him, and says, son, all that is mine is thine. What a joyous moment. Everyone who observed this, all those who bore witness, began to rejoice. Today's devotional, friends, I would encourage you, my Salem brothers, my Salem sisters, to never lose the joy of the moment. When the pastor extends his hand and someone who is lost walks the aisle, comes forward and accepts Jesus Christ, I pray that the house is just filled with joy. How greater 
is that moment of salvation than the joy that people had when I scored that touchdown in a football game. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of rejoicing. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of salvation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you've blessed us with another day. You've given us health and strength, at least enough that we can praise your name and thank you for being our Lord and Savior. Father, I pray that the spirit of rejoicing is never lost upon this church, that when someone steps out into the aisle, walks forward and gives their life to Christ, that our church just explodes with the spirit of rejoicing, joy, and much greater than anything that could happen in a sporting event. Thank God. Be blessed, my friends. Have a wonderful day.